Hello and welcome to the 2022 Team DSM launch. My name is Hannah East and I will be your host for today. Now we're delighted to be able to broadcast this to you live from the Netherlands, a pro of Corona times. We're all getting pretty good at these uh, virtual events now. Now while we're on that topic, we would like to quickly mention before we get started that all of us here in the studio, which is the riders, the staff, the crew, we have all been tested in the run up to the event and we are operating in multiple bubbles within today's team launch to maintain distance and follow the current advice of the Netherlands, of course. Now, we are really excited to have you all join us from wherever you are in the world. It's certainly been a year that the world has tried to return to normal. We've had a full racing calendar, which gave lots of fantastic racing. And we were lucky enough to compete in 20 countries with all three of our programmes, the men, the women and development, securing 34 wins, 70 other podium finishes and a further 165 top tens. We've seen some standout performances from Team DSM's development programme, a phenomenal sprint campaign for the women's programme and the men's programme wrapped up their season in style. But a lot more of all of that later on. But for now, thanks for joining us. More importantly, grab yourself a coffee, make yourself comfortable and get ready to enjoy the show. But before we get started, let's look back at 2021. The race winner is Roman Bardet, his first stage win in La Vuelta. Twenty twenty one was an exciting year, the start of another chapter and another era where the team's development, women and men's programmes all competed under a new name. Now we've seen some fantastic performances across the team's three programmes, and next year the team want to go even bigger and even better. But before we bring the 2022 roster on the stage, let's bring two of the CEOs of these incredible organisations together and give us a little update on what they've been working on this year and, of course, their plans for the future. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Ewan Sprakenbrink, who's the Team DSM CEO, and Dimitri De Vreza, the co-CEO of Team DSM. I mean, where do we start? It's your, the end of your first year together, of course. How has the year been for you, Ewan? Yeah, we've been working since 2015 uh, with DSM, but this year, yeah, it, it went up to a whole new level. Yeah. And we really loved each and every second of it. And for example, also our uh, specialists back at uh, HQ, they really liked working with all those yeah, uh, scientists, all the people uh, that DSM is in-house. Uh, it was like children at Christmas. <laughs> and, and maybe a nice example is DSM owns this company called Mixfit. It's a really uh, highly technological uh, company. And DSM is just encouraging our specialists to go out there, go and uh, work with the scientists of Mixfit, <coughs> really think without boundaries and develop uh, next level and personalized uh, nutrition. And yeah, it's almost incredible. The DSM uh, has offices, 200 offices across the world, offices and sites, they have 20,000 people. And to have all that engineering and scientific capacity and opportunities behind us, yeah, it's really uh, almost uh, 
surreal. So yeah. yeah, that was a great experience and there's a lot to come. And the year itself, yeah, it was an intense year. Uh, and I guess about, we can say it teaches us a bit of resilience as well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Re resilience is, is part of elite sports at the highest level. Um, elite sports is focusing on the essence, being prepared for what you have in control and also being prepared for what you have not uh, in control, what comes yeah. into your part and dealing better with it than the opposition does. Yeah. Resilience is not only a part of elite sports, it's a performance quality. Yeah. Now, you've mentioned a lot there about innovation, nutrition, that's really driving your partnership with the, the DSM. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, I think <clears throat> we are a company who's strong in, in health and nutrition and biosciences, and um, we we have quite some capability. I, I couldn't have said it better than what <laughs> Yvonne has said. Uh, I, I love what you were saying. But we also have a food system in the world which is a bit unbalanced. If I give you two numbers, we have 800 million people in the world who are malnurtured on the one side. Wow. We've got 2 billion people in the world who are overweight. So there's a distortion in that, in that food system. And, and we as DSM, having capability in everything which has linked to food, we think we have a, a responsibility uh, to change that. And, and that is what is driving us every day. And we keep the motto of Team DSM, keep challenging in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a fantastic motto because what we're trying to do is, is push these boundaries on where science can lead us, where we basically feel that the team could bring the difference, the team of TSM, like the Team DSM in cycling, because we say you cannot be a genius in splendid isolation. That would be weird. You need to collaborate. Yeah, and, and what's, it's obviously considered a major part uh, in the future of nutrition and health. So tell us more on how specifically that's going to benefit Team DSM. Yeah, the interesting um, trend which we see in the world is that we originally thought that people are being mentioned in boxes, right? You, you belong to a certain box. It's a bit weird. Um, now we have infant nutrition, you have elderly nutrition, you have medical nutrition. So... You, you belong to a certain box, you get nutrition. The interesting, Anna, is that you and I have different metabolisms. Mm -hmm. um, we have individual systems in itself. So if we can personalize that nutrition, yeah. we can improve on our health. And that's obviously a fantastic pathway to all the riders of Team DSM, yeah. where we can personalize the proposition to these riders, which we do. So we have all the data. We use biosciences and the data sciences. In today's world, data is everything, right? Yeah. I mean, we're all wearing our, our watches and, and, and basically making huge algorithms work. Yeah. We try to do the same for Team DSM with MixFit, which is a fantastic algorithm and a machine who mixes liquid drinks with minerals and vitamins, personalized to the riders. Next year, uh, we use our hologram sciences company in the US to launch vitamin D. Vitamin D is a fantastic ingredient to improve your immune system. Uh, we do that together with our partner, Sanas, who basically use that ingredient yeah. to make that work for the rider. So personalization is absolutely key for performance and for health. There's so much more that goes on to this, you know, behind the scenes that sometimes a lot of, of people don't even realize. But I believe you've got some good news for us today, Ivan, as well. Yes, and we had already good news. Uh, as you have seen uh, this week, we announced uh, a big, big uh, new partnership with a large uh, company from the telecoms industry, uh, Uphone. They offer uh, subscriptions to consumers and companies in the Netherlands and in Belgium. Uh, we are very happy to have them on board. And two other really nice partnerships were announced with LFA Logistics and with Aquastep, two, two really nice companies. We're proud to have them on board. Yeah, and then today, another big partnership, uh, we are happy to announce that with uh, with the large European optician uh, group, Hans Anders Retail Group. They operate over 700 uh, uh, optician stores across Europe. They run multiple formulas, uh, the well-known Hans Anders formula, the internationally rapidly growing uh, Ice and More formula, Direct Optique in, in Sweden. Yeah, and we become the central part of their international marketing strategy, something we are incre incredibly proud of, yeah. that we can help promote those formulas. But that's not all. Uh, with the specialists and the engineers of the Hans Anders Retail Group, our in-house uh, colleagues, our in-house specialists are really collaborating, working together um, in raising the bar, in developing uh, next generation uh, yeah. race eyewear. And there will be some new innovations and new technologies be announced uh, very soon. Very interesting. And uh, you've been working on a few other things as well, haven't you? 
And maybe good also to to mention, of course, this is also on top of the current of our uh, current partners. Of course, yeah. like we said, we work with DSM. Um, important to say, Scott bikes. It was it was always a dream to work with them. They are the best bikes out there, equipped with uh, with uh, Shimano. Gr great Volvo cars, a brand we really would love uh, to work with, and we do now. Uh, Suver, um, Webex, yeah, and and what we do more is is in. Basically, in, in extension, what we said about the race eyewear, last year we stepped away with race clothing from yeah. the traditional sponsorship um, uh, model. Our in-house uh, colleagues, um, textile fabrics engineer, product manager, aerodynamic specialist, they really took the development and production of our own race clothing in our own hands to accelerate development, to quicker uh, integrate new um, innovations. And a very important one is the integration of... Um, protective fibers of Dyneema. So to develop more performance, faster uh, uh, race clothing, but with integrated uh, protection to really combining the, 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 two, the, the, yeah, the two worlds. Yeah. yeah, and today we can announce that <clears throat> the really famous uh, race clothing brand with a great history, with a fantastic production facility, MOA, the brand Nalini is stepping into this uh, project and they're helping us uh, to accelerate uh, those developments. It's so exciting, isn't it? Yeah, we're really happy. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not surprised. Now, it is so interesting to hear how you both have, have sort of worked together and, and the anti-doping effects, etc. as well. So, and ri riders' health and safety is, is paramount, isn't it? So it's a really, really exciting time for the team, you must agree. Yes, and that's the beauty of this partnership. There is a lot of, uh, of parallels. Yeah. Uh, as you hear from Dimitri, DSM is really all about, uh, they, they care about the environment they operate in, like we do. And, and we try to support uh, yeah. DSM in their advocacy for better health for people and yeah. better health for, uh, uh, for the planet. And they really encourage us uh, to also take care of our environment and, and help contribute to make pro cycling a better place uh, with the highest standards. Yeah, well, thank you very much for speaking to us, both of you. Now, we've heard from the CEOs behind the operation, but now it's going to be moving on to quite an exciting time. For the first time, we're going to meet Team DSM's 2022 roster. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Team DSM. I mean, I don't think they're expecting the confetti there, but it looks great. How fantastic do they look? Now, after a big change between 20 to 21 seasons, the changes to the jersey this year are a little bit more subtle. The kit remains with its striking two-stripe design and, of course, those fantastic new partnerships can be seen on the kit. They look absolutely amazing. Now, here on stage, we have most of our roster for 2022, not all. Let's give a welcome to our ri riders that are going to be joining us from overseas via Webex. We've got Leah Kirchner, in Canada. We've got Megan Jastrab and Kevin Vermarker in the USA and Pat Eddy and Sam Wellsford in Australia. Also joining us from Germany is Nikias Arndt and Max Poole, who's in the UK. Hello to you guys. We'll try not to make that awkward when they're just waving at us, uh, <laughs> waving at us there. But we've got some very important questions from some very important people. Let's di dial into some young up and coming journalists out on location who are pretty keen to ask a few questions.
Hi Kees, I'm Oscar. What's going on in your head as your eyes friend? A question there from Oscar, who's coming in hot. I like it. So he said to Case, what's going through your mind when you sprint? Hey, Oscar, thanks for your question. Uh, yeah, it's actually not much time to think in a sprint. It's all going so quickly. But I try to focus on my teammates, what's happening around me and uh, the parkour. And then when I launch the sprint, there's actually no more thinking, just all out to the line. It's so nice to see young kids asking questions, isn't it? Especially he may be up on this stage one day. Who knows? Now, uh, I believe we've got another question for Lorena. Let's take a look. Hi, Lorena. What is the longest ride on your bike? So cute. So another good question. How many kilometres have you ever ridden on your bike? My longest ride was 173 kilometers. Wow. And it was in the COVID period when we had no races. And it was a nice long ride in Limburg. And that was pretty tough is, throughout lockdown, not to be having any races and stuff like that. So uh, that's, pr that's a pretty long ride, that is, isn't it? <laughs> A pretty long ride. Now, we've got a few of the questions that have been sent in over the last couple of weeks on social media from some of the, for some of the riders. Let's start with Juliet. So, Juliet, a question for you has come in from Leah Martin on Instagram. She said, you had a super consistent year with your GC rides. What is it about riding GC that you like? And will you focus on this more in the future? Yeah, there's a lot of things that I like about GC. There's a lot of factors that play a role in especially recovery, nutrition, <clears throat> and uh, be me mentally ready every day. So yeah, I really like that. And you have to optimize everything. And yeah, I will keep on working uh, on it next year. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice answer there. We've got a question for Niels um, from Peter Vrays. He said, your ride at the Paris-Roubaix was great. It was a pretty epic day out. Now, I love questions like this. On a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, obviously, um, how crazy was it? And was there not a moment that you felt like giving up? Yeah, that was uh, one hell of a day. Uh, <laughs> I would probably give it a 10 from, yeah. uh, from craziness. I mean, uh, I don't know what would be even more epic. epic. I never thought of uh, quitting, you know. No matter what, I would make the finish line. Yeah, I love that determination. Never quitting, never quitting. Now, we've heard from the riders on stage. We are going to come back to them a bit later on. We're going to grab a word with Ewan, who's going to be joined by head coach Rudy Kemnus. They're going to come on and have a quick chat with us there. Thank you. You're back again. Rudy, nice to have a, a chat with you today, mainly to talk about what a challenging year it's been. Yeah, it's been a very intense year. Um, positives. Yeah, uh, lots of positives, yeah. Yes, lots of positives. Uh, potential for improvement on some points and also some challenges we faced. That's, that's sports and that's life. But yeah, we are so driven to uh, perform. We have a, a great group of, of athletes here at stage. We have fantastic uh, colleagues behind the scenes <clears throat> who are determined to, to be a front runner and stay a front runner in knowledge and know-how in getting the best out of, uh, of our athletes. And that together... We want to get the best out of our potential. And the key success factor to, to achieve that is commitment with all these people, committing to that one goal and really committing to each other. And we know when that's, in, when, when that's good in place, yeah, a lot of energy uh, uh, is, is ignited, um, a lot of fun. And then, then, then we can focus on the essence and then we can perform. And we've seen that in the past so many times. When, when that commitment was in place, when there was this energy, then the team elevated above itself. And we have been successful in multiple sprint, sprint stages, in monuments uh, and in Grand Tours. Yeah. And looking at this group and, and to our colleagues, we know uh, that that commitment is in place and we, yeah, we can focus on the essence and we look forward to a successful year. Yeah, and we can see, Rudy, as a whole team, it's so crucial, teamwork. Yeah, we want to do it together. Yeah. And uh, when we have uh, good teamwork, and uh, also this uh, is what we see, it's very important. It was in the past important, and it's still uh, also this year was it important. And we want to go to next year that we have also that on a high level. Uh, we see it this year in the in the ladies team where we have, uh, when the commitment was there, and when we uh, see that we work together, uh, already uh, great um, results uh, starts in the, in the Schelderprijs. Uh, where we have a, uh, a nice sprint, 
Um, after that, we had also uh, victories in uh, in the, the Giro, where we have uh, three, st where we win three stages. Yeah. Uh, and and on the end of the year was it uh, in Drenthe, a World Tour race uh, for the ladies. What a fantastic uh, teamwork was. So yeah, we are really proud about that. Yeah. Uh, next to that, next to that, we have also our development, where we really uh, go for our development. Uh, we want to bring better the riders, better on a higher level on the bike, but also off the bike, just to learn what is necessary for, uh, for top sport. Um, and that is also what we uh, succeed this year also, and we want also to do it uh, for next year. Mm -hmm. So lots to be proud of at the end of the, the first year. Yeah, we have, yeah. We, have, uh, we have still also our World Tour team, and, and okay, we are, I think the level was not good enough uh, on the Tour de France, uh, but next to that we have a fantastic Giro, and also uh, the Vuelta was really, really great with the victories, but also really with the teamwork. Yeah. Well, thank you very much to, uh, to both of you for, for talking to me. It's great to chat with you, Rudy, and get that insight as well. Uh, we're going to have some more questions now with the riders, so I'm going to ask you guys to come and uh, step to the side for me because we've got some more questions that are coming in, OK? So, we're, first question is for Liana. It was a steady start to the season for you, Liana, with some bad luck in the classic period. Yeah, the start of our season was yeah not ideal, not like we planned, but yeah, we just didn't give up in the classics and we just evaluated every race and kept on fighting. And yeah, later in the season, it really worked out and we started winning again. It was great. Well, you certainly did because the incredible 18 wins, lots of other great performances with some strong GC results from Germany, Italy and Spain. How was that collectively for the team? Yeah, that's really great just to win together with the team. You lose together and you win together. And yeah, we always go with a really um, strict plan into a race. And yeah, the best thing is if that works out. And yeah, that's just great to work with a team like this. Yeah. And what can you tell us about next year? Yeah, next year we will yeah start, of course, with the classics. So the um, focus will be there and also on sprint races, but also we will really focus on GC races. We have many great stage races coming up next year. And yeah, we have also many new faces in the team. And I'm super excited to yeah, race with the girls. Yeah, and it's great that we've got pretty much the, the whole team together. It's not often that we get an opportunity to do this. So this is, this is brilliant. Now, I've got a question for Yoris. Welcome to your first team launch. So I guess you're super excited to be here. Yeah, of course, I'm really excited for next year. Uh, it's a new team for me, so yeah. also new goals uh, to achieve. Bit nervous, or are you okay? Yeah, a bit nervous. Yeah, but, uh, that's understandable, yeah. though, isn't it? But yeah, when I, when I start cycling, uh, it was always be a dream of me to be a part, uh, like a team like this. Yeah. Yeah, now I achieved that, so yeah, that's really cool, and uh, yeah. And then joining your brother in the development program is it a bit of rivalry between you both? Would you say? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> for sure. Um, I've heard al already a lot of things uh, from Pepijn and that yeah. were all uh, very positive things about the team. So that made my decision also easier to join. And yeah, uh, a, few weeks a few weeks ago we had uh, the team meeting and uh, that was uh, really fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the knowledge that they have here is amazing. Yeah. I'm definitely getting a, a sense of that from, from everybody. Now, another question is for Roman, another rider that was new to the team, of course, this year. How did you find it settling into the team in a, a new environment? Yeah, it's been uh, pretty pretty great. Here. I'm really very happy in the team. I already felt from the first day, uh, yeah, at home in uh, in the team. So uh, we have made some great improvement last year. I think, uh, yeah, we really focused first on the basics, as Dimitri said before, working hard also on the nutrition and yeah. get all those details right. And uh, yeah, I think the the results. We're great on, on this side. Especially for the second part of the season for you, particularly the Vuelta. Yeah, it has been a long and a consistent year. We first focused on, on the GC with a solid uh, solid group on the Giro, and then we move on to the to the Vuelta with uh, hunting for stage win. And uh, we have been a pretty nice build up with a super good of, of guy uh, into the Vuelta, and we we get some some big win from the team there. So it was a really a big achievement for all of us. Yeah. So what can we expect to see from you next season, next year? Yes, we are we are still working on the, the plans for, for next year, but uh, I think yeah, last year uh, going for two Grand Tour, one for the GC and uh, other one for stage wins was a pretty good mix. So 
yeah, we hope to do a bit of the, the same next year. Yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Now, I don't know about you guys at home, but I'm curious to speak to some of the masterminds, some of behind all of the success. So let's just have a look at, in the, uh, the team car. This is a, a moment in the life of the coaches. Take a look at this. Go, 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 Roman. Go, go, go. This is brilliant. Come on. This is brilliant. This is really, really good, Roman. You deserve this. We commit to the finish. Come on. Brilliant riding. Brilliant riding. We hold the tempo and we keep going all the way. Come on, mate. Push, 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 push. Still 44 seconds. Enjoy this one, Roman. Steep at the top. 500 meters to go. It was 44 seconds at 500 meters to go. It's steep in the top. Yeah. Well done, Roman. Really, really good work. Well done. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. All good? Can I have a cappuccino? A cappuccino? We only do espresso in this car. Coffee. So good, Michael. I love it. <laughs> you absolute legend. <laughs> oh, man. How did you like my French? Sunk? Cease? Set? And a week? Week? Merci? Au revoir! I mean, Matt, that is some serious multitasking. I'm very impressed. What else is in your car? Oh, there's plenty in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's busy at times, but yeah. kind of it's also a really nice team car and we uh, get to keep the guys supplied with everything they need. Yeah, and apparently you're the only person that switches your camera on, which is why we've only got footage of you. Yeah, right? the rest are a little bit camera shy, so we're trying to encourage yeah. them for the 2022 season. So you're the man for the job, that's why. Now, I'm joined by the selection. I'm going to say selection, not all of the, the coaches uh, from Team DSM. We've got Matt Winston, who's responsible for the men's programme GC group. We've got Phil West, who's responsible for the Classics group. Roy Curvers, who's responsible for the Sprint group. Albert Timmer, who works with the Women's Programme. Benny Lambretz, who works with the Development Programme. And of course, Rudy Kemner, head coach. So Matt, I'm going to start off with you first and looking at the successes of, of 2020 and, and 2021. Let's reflect on that. Yeah, I think kind of 2020 was a really good season. We, uh, we really came out after the COVID break in, in a good way. Um, it's true that kind of 2021 wasn't kind of the best season. We had some really good things in there and we built a, a good foundation that hopefully we can carry on into 2022. I think kind of, as Ivan said before, sport is about resilience. Yeah. It's not for everybody. Um, it, and we kind of, we have a really good way of working. Um, but I think we have a really motivated group behind us um, that are all really keen to get started in 2022. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, but like Matt says, it is about the foundation and we put a lot of focus on how we work as a team yeah. and as a group and with each other. So it's primarily about being honest, but it's also about being motivated and bringing energy to each other. And uh, but I think that's also quite normal, whether it's a personal or professional relationship, right? Um, and when we give focus on that foundation, it gives us the, the place where we can build and then take steps. But we have to keep focus on that, on that position to then build forward. And I'm pretty sure that everybody in the room and uh, also the guys who are around the world and at home, uh, we can do that together, you know. Yeah. Now, Roy, you've got 12 years experience as a rider, three years as a coach. That's a lot of experience to bring to the table. Yeah, I think... Um, you like that question, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I like that question, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's also uh, an honor actually to uh, walk through all these ranks uh, within the team. And um, as a rider, I was part of uh, some of the great successes of the team. And um, 
Yeah, I can say that uh, the philosophy and the way of working of the team yeah, hasn't changed that much over all the years. And um, yeah, like Matt said, maybe uh, 2021 wasn't uh, the season that we are the most proud of, but yeah, it also uh, helped us start up uh, again and, and rebuild again. And um, <coughs> as we always did, we learned from uh, uh, from setbacks or, uh, or mistakes. Yeah. And the good thing in cycling is that every upcoming year is uh, a new chance again uh, for everything. And um, yeah, what we feel uh, in the group around here is that everybody's really motivated to go again for those chances. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Albert, 11 years as a rider, four as a coach, what's it like on the other side? And you have to give the same answer that you gave in rehearsal <laughs> as well. Tell me honestly and truthfully. <laughs> um, if you want to have the truth. Yes. I think the boys and girls behind you have actually an amazing job. I wish I could still be there. <laughs> actually, I'm too old for that. Now, I think the um, the nicest thing, the approach that we have towards the towards races and how we work as a team uh, when I was a rider and now also as a coach didn't change so much. It's the it's same as uh, what Roy said. Um, we still use it and also in my new job as, as a coach for the last past years that um, first with the Divos and the women now. I think the approach still works and you can see it really uh, coming out in the last part of the season uh, with the women program. You, you said yesterday though that this job was harder than uh, than their job in the rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, I did, did, I did actually say did. that. <laughs> I didn't want to repeat that again <laughs> because there are actually uh, 58 or 57 faces looking at me. <laughs> Well, earlier we mentioned how Team DSM work with three groups, the Sprint, the Classics and GC. Let's take a look at their targeted camps, which are tailored to the development of riders in those three disciplines. Do people are going to be watching that and, and think, how do you work out the three groups and why? Yeah. We have here uh, almost 60 uh, athletes and they are all unique. They are really uh, have all the special qualities. And uh, we have no 60 uh, coaches, but uh, at least uh, we, we split it in three groups, uh, the sprints, uh, the classics and also the GCs just to have the, the the work and the qualities what we have as coaches but also the qualities yeah. what uh, the riders have that we that we <coughs> bring it on uh, on a specific part um with our coach but also with our experts that's also very important that we have um moments that we can really work together on the specific quality from the rider mm -hmm. and also when it's not there that we that we can bring it in development yeah we make it in three groups but let's be clear when we go to the race we are one team yeah. And that is that is uh, very important that uh, that we work together, and that we have also the GC rider helps with the sprint. So that is what we really want to uh, and what we do already. What we bring in in yeah. the team, 
Uh, that's why we have three groups. So, Roy, you're going to be working with a sprint group as a coach, aren't you? Yeah, uh, definitely. In the past, um, I was uh, part of a successful sprint train we had uh, uh, within the team. Uh, we had great successes with uh, John, but also with Massa Kittel. And basically there, it was with the same idea. Uh, a group of riders within the team focusing really on a specific part of the, of the job. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, sprint finals. Um, everybody had his own uh, development points, his own uh, developing things, uh, which helped them to make uh, the next step in their career. But it all came together in that uh, in that focus on uh, sprint finals, and yeah, in the end, that uh, was a process that uh, yeah, really um, let us inspire each other, helped us motivate each other. Um, yeah, it was a lot of work, a lot of focus, but in the meantime, also a lot of fun. And um, yeah, that's that's a period of my life that I uh, look back to uh, yeah, with uh, with great pride. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's up to us to create the environment uh, uh, to have those uh, kind of successes again. Yeah, I mean these camps sound amazing. I want to go, Matt. What goes on at the camps? Yeah, we uh, we have a, a lot of uh, specialists that work in the team, and they they come and attend the camps and and really work with the riders in specific areas, uh, specific testing. Yeah. Um, but we also really break things down as well. So we look at specific tactics, um, maybe uh, race specific drills, and we just kind of try and tie it all together. We also have conversations about the future. Um, how we build, how we keep progressing um, for the future events that are coming. But we also reflect and we evaluate what's gone on, how we can be better as a team, how we can bring it all together mm -hmm. and, yeah. and keep moving forward. And the, your attention to detail as a team is really impressive. Yeah, I think kind of when everybody works in their area and everyone really focuses on that area, so the yeah. riders focus on, on the bike riding, the, the experts focus on their field, we can really have that attention to detail that, that's going to bring the best out of everybody. Yeah, and basically the camp is, is getting the riders ready. Mm, yeah, it's almost um, sometimes a final step, but it's all part of the, the overall package. Mm -hmm. But for instance, with the classics group, um, it gives the, t the time on the camps gives the opportunity to go into some detail on race scenarios, we can look back at past races, how we want to approach a future yeah. race and kind of get that uh, an overview of all the multiple scenarios we'll face during the season and start to build up some sort of uh, instinct for how we react in a race. But to be honest, how I, how I said earlier is we always read, keep focus on the basics yeah. and we keep focus on being honest with each other as a team and function as a high performance team. We bring each other motivation and we respect each other. And then when we have that foundation, we add the detail mm. of those race scenarios and those things. And then we can really step up the level of what we do. Yeah. And then we start to win races. Yeah. Albert, can you tell me a little bit about the, the women's program? Um, yeah, I think we have a, a little bit similar approach. Uh, the big advantage that we have, we have, of course, a smaller team. We're only with 13 riders and we have our team base. But the World Tour does a lot of in camps. We can do actually in our team base in Sidat. There we have a lot of nice facilities, like a, a big restaurant kitchen, uh, indoor training, a nice area to train. Uh, the riders that are actually living there during the season. So with the experts and the coach, coaching part uh, of the group, we can really work on a lot of aspects in, in cycling. It's also what the, what the World Tour does on the camps. Mm -hmm. And do you think this is why the women are kind of at the top of their game because of this? I think so, yeah. I think uh, the, in 2011, we started with the, with the <coughs> women program. And from that moment on, the base was already made and the extra addition with uh, the Keep Challenging Center really stepped up and we can go way more in detail because we have way more time to work on it. Mm -hmm. Now, Benny, we've saved the best to last to ask you some questions, haven't we, obviously? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How many promotions from the development program to the men's program is there now? Uh, it's 12 till now and still counting, so uh, we can be really... Uh, Proud of the, on that, I think, as team. And uh, it is also really nice that we can work from outside out with, uh, with our uh, young riders. That's giving really a drive and uh, yeah, it's helping them uh, also to develop into the World 2 team. Yeah. <coughs> now, we've mentioned about the, the successes earlier on, but that's not really what it's about, is it? No, I think not at all. I think the most important thing is that we work day in, and day out on the basics, what uh, Phil was saying. Um, and 
come to that foundation to come into the world too in, an, uh, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I think we have really a uh, yeah, big talent in, uh, in the group, a talent group. And that's also a compliment to the, the, to the scouting team uh, of our team. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for that. And after a challenging year, Rudy, it is great to see the, the motivation kind of turn a trend at what's ready for the new season. Yeah, I, I can say I, I'm really proud of this group, but we have also uh, coaches at home. We, we were last week together, uh, yeah. have a meeting and, and do an evaluation for this year and looking also and make plans for, for next year. Yeah. I've really... Uh, the focus and, and also the we want all to make uh, developing in this uh, in this group the group of coaches but in october we also were together with uh, with the whole team in uh, in deventer and also there you feel already there is something going on that we uh, that we want to go for it yeah that's really nice to see and what are the team's goals then for the new year we'll start with the men's program yeah, what we already discussed, we have we have special focus on uh, on the sprints. Yep. Uh, there, we also want to uh, make a step extra. We have uh, our talents for that, um, and we have also uh, the knowledge to bring it on a, on a higher level. There's for sure also a focus focus in in the World Tour races, but also in the Grand Tours where we uh, call for day su day success. Um, next to that, we have our classics uh, group where uh, where we have a nice block, final block. Mm -hmm. um, and with good teamwork, we can really make uh, different tactics in the final. Yeah. And there we want to go for. Yeah. And how about the women's program? Yeah, the women, they make already a fantastic season, <laughs> but I uh, just before also say. Uh, just with, uh, with it's okay to say it again. You can keep okay, saying it. Okay, okay. I, I keep compliments. <laughs> uh, I don't do it so much, but uh, yeah, today I like to do it. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Um, but with a little bit extra um, uh, step that we can make in the in the women's program with our sprints, where we have a, a fantastic uh, sprint train and, a, and fantastic sprinters. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are also in the classics where we want to uh, continue. Yeah. Um, with races like Paris Roubaix, it's it's fantastic to see, and also there we want to go in um, to the France that we have next year, where we uh, want to go for sprints for day results, but also for GC. And I think we are ready for that. We are we are almost on an absolute top, and uh, this is what we want to reach uh, also for next year. Yeah. But then we have also still our development, and that's also very important. Uh, our yeah. development, that's the future. There we want really also work on developing. Um, that's also the call already the last years to make uh, the, the talents ready for the world tour. Yeah. There they can shine, there they can uh, bring extra things. For sure, we want to also win races there. Um, but it makes really also uh, that we can make the development. A lot uh, to uh, look forward to on for next year. Yeah. You're taking the words out of my mouth here, Rudy. Uh, I was going to say there's lots, lots to look forward to, certainly. And, and thank you very much to all of you for, for the chat and that insightful look into what we're going to look to forward to seeing next year. But now we've had our chat with some of the coaches. I think we should head back over and have a, more chats with the riders. Okay, here we are then, back with the riders. I've had to stand still this whole time, so thank you very much for that. So, John, hello. Welcome back. It's great to have you back. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you? Very good, very good. Pleased to be back. Yeah, very delighted to be back. Uh, um, back home, I would even yeah. consider. Uh, I uh, enjoyed, of course, the, the time uh, I've, uh, I've spent here in the team, and um, now it's... Five years I, I spent in other teams, and uh, I always uh, had uh, had this had this feeling uh, that this is actually my 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 home team, and yeah. uh, now coming back is something very special, of course. And did you feel that as soon as you became part of the team again, you just felt like it was home, back to it with everyone? It's still the same spirit in the team. Yeah. I can I can definitely feel that. Uh, many many faces have have changed, and. Uh, some of the riders I used to ride with are now in the in the in the management, so it's uh, um, uh, still 
the, the core values are still the same and I think that's the most important and this this is, I, I could feel also from from the very first moment I came back uh, yeah. I got a, a great welcome and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, yeah kick off the new season uh, have uh, the first training camp together now and uh, also to create new uh, new memories uh, what uh, what stays forever and uh, that's that's something really important for me personally but yeah. uh, I would like to share that also with uh, with all the young and uh, not so experienced rider like yeah. uh, myself probably and, because uh, you achieved a lot uh, previously with the team didn't you what are we going to expect to see from you next year the the main goal will be really to create uh, memories like that to create a group of uh, like a really unique uh, unique group uh, that we can uh, yeah fight uh, against uh, on on the highest level of, of cycling that we uh, can uh, go in the in the classics on a on a high level that we have a, a sprint train uh, which is uh, working well and that we just have fun in one point but also have uh, a lot of success and um, that's uh, something I definitely can yeah. can help with. You're ready for it. You're ready for it with all your experience. Now, a question I've got here is for Casper. Now, you finished your second season with the team and had a super strong year with some great results. What's been the standout moment for you? I think we have had multiple standout moments, to be honest. Not really one, because yeah, we have had a really good group this year and the atmosphere was amazing. And I feel also like we have got a really good structure that have people helping us to develop to the, make it to the next step. Yeah, and we've heard a lot today about the development programme but and how successful it is, but what, what's it really like to be part of it? I think it's a really special experience, to be honest, and it's also really nice to have something like the Keep Challenging Centre in Limburg, mm -hmm. where we can get together and train together and yeah. like look into final details. And it's also really special to go with the world team and do mixed races it's yeah you learn a lot and it's a really yeah, really cool experience yeah and now we've got a, a question for five but last but not least it's been quite a, a season can you tell us more uh yeah i think i've really found my feet in the team this season um and it's been nice to be part of so many victories i think especially yeah in the second part of the year we had a really strong block and just the yeah the teamwork was really going well and we were on a roll and that was yeah a really nice feeling to be part of um also for me personally i yeah i could step up into more of a leader role and yeah captain role which i'm looking forward to doing more next year as well yeah and next year is is definitely a, an exciting time for women's cycling yeah definitely i think yeah this year we had the first uh Paris roubaix and next year tour de france so yeah. i think it's yeah a really exciting time no pressure no pressure ladies but i mean it's it's definitely a great time to be part of it isn't it for next year yeah well unfortunately that's all we've got time for for our 2022 launch it's gone like that it's been great to chat to people behind the scenes the riders the whole team it's been absolutely amazing so we have been here live from the netherlands it's been a great afternoon so thank you very much for watching now we will say that uh, we, the riders are going to stick around for some interviews so if you do have any questions please get in touch with emily bramia we have to say a huge thank you to royal dsm for making the team dsm team launch happen today and of course again thank you very much for you all at home for joining us have a fantastic christmas a great new year and we'll definitely see you on the roads next year